We all know the story of Leicester City, champions of the Premier League against all the odds after barely surviving relegation the previous season. It was a modern day fairy tale. The Fox's story was something you were more likely to have seen in a Disney movie rather than on a football field in the East Midlands of England. However, what you don't see in Disney movies is what comes after the happy ever after. Leicester's form ever since shocking the football world has been disappointing finishing a mediocre 12th last season and currently 8th at the time of recording. Not the worst results in the world, but certainly nowhere near as impressive as the 2015-16 season. Well today, we are going to take control of Leicester City and not only aim to repeat history in the Premier League, but also claim a Champions League title for the Foxes. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to another rebuild on the channel. We are headed back to the Premier League today. A highly requested rebuild, one of the most requested rebuilds as we take over Leicester City and aim to restore their top status. As always, fellas, if you are excited to see this rebuild, make sure that you leave a like on the video and also make sure that if you are new around here, that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. We are posting career mode content on the daily and we're also trying to hit 150,000 subscribers before the end of the year. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like, realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. All right, so this is gonna be our starting 11 for the first bit of the rebuild. Now, the, the areas that I think we need to hone or in on in this opening window is definitely our back line. Virtually everyone except for Harry Maguire needs to be replaced in this window. No disrespect to Christian Fuchs, Wes Morgan, and Danny Simpson, but in terms of a rebuild, they're not going to take us too far. They're all into their 30s. They're all high to mid-70s. We need to upgrade them. We need to lay the foundations for a successful future. So we've gone ahead and made ourselves our first signing, a defensive signing, Eric Dyer signing from Tottenham for £24 million. A great pick up there for our back line. Welcome to Leicester City, Eric Dyer. And only a few days later, we're going to sign ourselves a right back here. Elsen Heisaj, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I believe he's Albanian. Apologies if that's not the Albanian flag, but he is going to sign from Napoli for 22.2 million pounds. And we're going to go and get our third defensive signing here, bringing in a brand new left back, Juan Bernat from Bayern Munich on a pretty good deal. Only 13 million pounds there for the Spanish left back. Great signing. We have gone ahead and made three big signings only a month into the career mode into the rebuild. So welcome to Leicester City, Juan Bernat. A player departure here, the Argentinian striker, Leonardo Uloa is off to Aston Villa here for 3.25 million pounds. So three players in, we did exactly what we planned to do this window. We're still got a decent amount of coin left over for next transfer window. 21, 22 million. Hopefully that goes up a little bit. A departure or two, we might be able to make another quality signing in January, but we'll get to that when it happens. Let's see how we're going at the halfway point. All right, so here we are on the 1st of January, just over halfway through the season, and we're in an all right position. My line of thinking this year was, I wanted to finish top 10 definitely, maybe push for a Europa League spot, and we're definitely pushing for one right now. Six points away from fifth placed West Ham, and I guess from Spurs as well. I didn't realize they were on 38 points. Chelsea at the top of the table on 49 points. But I'm hopeful that we can finish in European football next season. Well, end of the season this year, but for next season. Looking down, though, to the bottom of the table, it is Crystal Palace, Brighton, and Newcastle all in the drop zone. Our biggest transfer for the rebuild so far, someone I've wanted to sign in rebuilds a lot this year as one of our star players. Hyungmin Sun is gonna sign from 
Tottenham for £22.6 million pounds, plus Danny Simpson now. I'm going to be playing him controversially at striker. I'm going to be replacing Jamie Vardy with Hyung Min Sun, an overall hire, and I want to keep Damaru Gray on the left-hand side. We'll see how it plays out, but welcome to Leicester, one of my favorite players in the Premier League, Hyung Min Sun. So we didn't do a super amount of transfer business, but it is a significant signing of Hyung Min Sun. Very excited to see how he performs over the rest of the season. My plan moving forward is getting rid of a lot of the older sort of Deadwood players that have decent values next season, splashing the cash and upgrading, but let's see what sort of a position we are in at the end of the season. That was not the second half of the season I was expecting, but I do believe in season two, we're going to be playing Champions League football, which is going to be really interesting to say the least. But we finish in fourth position on 63 points. We've climbed up the ladder in the second half of the season. Chelsea run away with the league by 11 points, but we're top four. I am happy with that. West Brom and Crystal Palace swap positions in the drop zone, and it is going to be Brighton, West Brom, and not Newcastle United in the championship next season. In the FA Cup, we were eliminated in the round of 16 by the eventual champions, Manchester United. And in the League Cup, we didn't even make it to the last 16. Tottenham went on to win that tournament. Bayern Munich defeat Juventus. 3-2 to win the Champions League final. Very intrigued to see what we can do next year. And in the Europa League, Lazio defeats Liverpool 1-0 in the final. So season one exceeded all expectations. Really excited to see how we can go in European football next year and how we can continue to improve the squad. I don't expect us to win the Champions League next season, but I expect us to lay some more groundwork. We kick season two off with a massive signing here. Another big name Premier League player coming to the club. We're trying to somewhat revive the career of Ilkay Gundogan. Been very unlucky with injuries, but he now plays for Leicester City. He has come to the club from Man City for 48 million plus Ibora. Welcome to Leicester, Ilkay Gundogan. Also, I was just looking through the board objectives for the season. They want us to reach the semi-finals of the Champions League. With the squad we have, I'm thinking we're going to be lucky to get out of the group stages depending on who's in our group, let alone reach the semis. Come on, Leicester. So we've got to go through the playoff rounds this year to get into the Champions League. And it is not an easy opponent. I mean, sometimes you get drawn up against these random sides from smaller sort of leagues that you think you could run over. But Celtic are probably going to cause us a bit of trouble, to be honest. And if the board wants us to get to the semi-finals and we get knocked out in the playoff rounds, that is not going to be good. They've got some really quality players. Musa Dembele is an absolute weapon. Uh, Tierney's a weapon on career mode. I think that's Adam Armstrong from uh, Newcastle in there. Unchum on the bench is quality. Boyata's quality. Tommy Rogic is quality. They pick up an injury. Still nil all here. Not 100% certain if away goals rule applies in the playoff rounds. Hopefully it does if we score. But considering we score in the 90th, okay, good. I was about to say, considering we haven't scored, I hope it doesn't, but 1-0 heading into the second matchup. Another player departure here, Johan Benaloon is off to Guangamp in the French League for £4.8 million. Alright, the second league now, we are at home, we are back at the King Power Stadium. Let's see if we can get ourselves through to the group stages. As long as we don't concede here, we go through, which is a good... A good mantra to have for a lot of games. But we can see it in the fifth minute. We get a goal back though. Dyer does pick up an injury. Not what we want at all. I hope he's not out for a long time. I guess he's still on the field. So it mustn't be all that bad. But it's one all here. Rogic misses a penalty after being on the field for two minutes. Normally I don't like seeing Tommy Rogic miss a penalty. But when it's against us, I don't mind. Gray makes it 3-1. We're looking pretty good here. And we are going to be going through to the Champions League group stages. Blowing virtually our entire transfer budget on Ilka Gundogan might be a good move, but also it limited us from being, it being very efficient, I guess, in the window. Couldn't bring anybody else in. We've got Gundogan in, Benaloon and Abora out. 
Our starting 11 looks good besides a few injuries, but let's go and check out our Champions League group stage or group, yeah, our group. I feel like as I've been doing these rebuilds more and more, my ability to talk has gone further down, which really doesn't make sense. So we really haven't been blessed here with a good group. Yes, I know, you got to expect a rough group when you go through the qualifiers, but Bayern Munich, Villarreal, and Feyenoord, oh god, we might get our asses handed to us here, we might squeeze into the knockout rounds, who knows, I guess we'll know in a second, so let's simulate it in 3, 2, 1. What the hell? We actually qualified, we get through in second position, not surprised to see Bayern Munich going undefeated and crushing the group but we get through to the round of 16 which i was not expecting seven points final with four villarreal with three let's switch to the tournament tree that rhymed top left hand corner oh god not an easy task at all we have to face PSG in the Champions League round of 16. things are not going well for us however in the Premier League we are in 11th position here halfway through the season. We're on 23 points. We are 9 points behind 5th place Burnley, 10 points behind 4th place Man City. So we have a lot of ground to make up if we want to be playing Champions League football next season. Looking at the drop zone, however, Stoke City, Fulham and Wolves are in big strife heading into the second half of the season. But let's get into January now and see if we can make any business to improve our squad. So I don't plan on doing too many pre-contract signings with Leicester here. Gotta kinda take my foot off the pedal a little bit with them, but David De Gea, I can't pass up that opportunity. We need a new goalkeeper. Kasper Schmeichel, whilst he's still quality, he's gonna be 32 next season. So we need to bring in someone world-class and younger and to sign a 92 rated David De Gea on a free. I can't pass up that opportunity. So, welcome to Leicester City, David De Gea. We're gonna bolster up our back line here a little bit. Whilst Harry Maguire was someone that I wanted to keep for the majority of the rebuild, I've come to the conclusion that we need to upgrade him. So, I've gone ahead and signed Ruben Semedo, who has a lot better potential than Harry Maguire. So, 10 million pounds plus Maguire to Villarreal. Welcome to Leicester City, Ruben Semedo. So that's the end of the transfer window. David De Gea in next year, Semedo in now, Harry Maguire out now. Very excited to see how we go with this squad, but let's simulate to our Champions League round of 16 game against PSG. And also a bit of business outside the window. At the start of next season, Robert Huth is going to be packing his bags, heading back to his home nation of Germany and signing with Bremen. All right, it is time for our Champions League round of 16 game against PSG. Full strength starting 11 out there. I'm not going to lie, I am not feeling super confident heading into this game. Should be quite interesting though, the home leg first. They have a much better side than us. Neymar, Di Maria. I know they, they sold Cavani. He went to, I think it was Chelsea in this save. Mares gets us in the lead, but they pick up a goddamn away goal. William Jose making it one all, but Riyad Mares getting us a goal early on, which helps a lot. But I mean, we're still going to have to score on the second leg now if we're any chance. But this really has gone a lot better than I expected. A one-all draw here in the first leg against PSG. So the big test now is the away leg. We travel to the Parc des Princes in Paris to see if we can get ourselves a quarterfinal spot. Now we're going to need to score a goal. They have an away goal, so we need to get on the scoreboard early. Are we going to be able to do it? They have quite an interesting side, PSG. They have PK, Luke Shaw. Just looking at players they've signed. William Jose, Christensen. It's a very weird side, but it's nil all at the moment here. No action happening at all. Julian Draxler on the field. We need to score a goal. Somebody needs to step up in the last 15 minutes. No, they score. And PSG are going to knock us out in the round of 16. 2-1 on aggregate. We put up a much better fight than I expected, but unfortunately, we have to wait another season before we can even think about completing the rebuild again. So I'm going to simulate to the end of the season, and I'm going to pray to the FIFA gods that we qualify for Champions League football in Season 3. Well, this season really has not gone to plan. I thought maybe we could get to Season 3 and pull off a shock Champions League win and complete the rebuild, but... 
we're gonna have to wait until season four at least after we finish in ninth position. Not what we wanted at all. A very bad season. Man United did go on to win the league and the bottom three, Huddersfield did replace Wolverhampton, but it's going to be Fulham, Stoke City and Huddersfield all being relegated. Checking out the FA Cup, we did not make it to the last 16 this season. Tottenham did go on to win that tournament. And checking out the Carabao Cup, we got to the last 16 where we lost to the eventual winners Everton. Bayern Munich did go on to win the Champions League final 3-1 over Real Madrid. Good to see us on the round of 16 board though. Very happy to be in the picture, but we're going to have to wait a while now before we're back here. And Borussia Dortmund did win an all-German Europa League final, taking down Leverkusen 2-1. So season number two was a massive disappointment. The only silver lining to it is that we have David De Gea coming to the club next season, but... In terms of results, especially domestically, very, very bad. We need to bounce back in Season 3 and finish in the top four again. Season 3 begins here with a monster signing as Julian Brandt is going to sign from Manchester City. Originally from Leverkusen, but he's at Man City in this save. He has come to the club for £41 million. Our starting 11 is starting to become really impressive. Christian Fuchs is going to depart the club here. He's off to Red Bull Salzburg in the Austrian league for £2.9 million. Back to Austria. Good luck, mate. So we've gone ahead and made a bit of an, an insurance signing, I guess. A bit of signing for our depth. We only had two centre-backs that were quality in the entire squad. So we've gone ahead and signed Steve Cook from Bournemouth for £11.4 million. So Mark Albrighton has left the club. The left midfielder is off to Stoke City for £8.2 million. So it's been a very interesting window. Again, slowly but surely, just upgrading our squad, in improving the certain positions and getting us that extra step further to closer to reaching Champions League glory. So Julian Brandt and Steve Cook in, Christian Fuchs and Mark Albrighton out. Interested to see how we're going halfway through. Let's check out the table at the midway point. Halfway through the season and we are back where we need to be. Granted, the table is probably the closest it has been in the entire rebuild, but Leicester City, fifth position, if we put in a good second half of the season, we could play Champions League football. Scratch that, we need to play Champions League football next season. Man United currently top of the table, but it is definitely a very close title race. I would even say we're in good contention at the moment. Looking at the drop zone though, Aston Villa, Cardiff City, and Wolverhampton all involved. Islam Slimani is the latest player to depart the club. The Algerian striker makes the move to Galatasaray for £11.2 million. This might be a transfer that some of you question. Why have I signed Joel Matip and why have I gotten rid of Semedo in the deal? Now, Semedo, 83 overall, 85 potential. Joel Matip, 85 rated. So, we've already got Semedo's max potential replaced out. Joel Matip comes to the club for what I think is a quality deal. Semedo plus 4.5 million pounds. Welcome to Leicester City, Joel Matip. So it definitely was a pretty interesting window. Matip in, Semedo and Slomani out. Our team's looking pretty good. I'm interested to see if we can qualify for Champions League, but let's go and suss that out. Get in there, we almost won the freaking title, but we are in Champions League for next season. We finished two points behind Man City. I swear, maybe my mind is playing tricks on me, but I feel like Man United were leading the table, leading the competition at the halfway point. Maybe it was Chelsea, I can't remember, but we're second. We're playing Champions League football again next season, and we're in with a great shot. Burnley, Cardiff, and Wolves all go down. Sorry, Vizza, but Burnley's gone. And again, a very disappointing performance in the FA Cup. Not even in the last 16. Again, same deal with the Carabao Cup. We don't even make it to the last 16 of that tournament. Man City have had an incredible season. They win the Champions League on top of the Premier League, and I'm pretty sure they won the FA Cup. And AC Milan did go on to defeat Schalke in a Europa League final that finished 
3-2. So this season, season number three, definitely a big contrast from last season. Let's see if we can go that extra step further and go really deep into the Champions League. I don't know if we're going to be able to win it in Season 4, but I definitely hope we can have a good shot at it. We're going to make our first signing here for Season number 4, and it is a dead set bargain. Denis Suarez is going to sign from Barcelona for £40.5 million. A lot of money until you've realised that. Number one, he's 86 rated, but number two, most importantly, his value is 46.5 million. Now, Barcelona screwed up by putting that small of a release clause on him. We pay it, and we now have a top quality midfielder. So welcome to Leicester, Dennis Suarez. We've gone ahead and upgraded our right back spot as well. Our team is looking amazing. We have signed Danny Carvajal from Real Madrid, 26.4 million pounds plus our former right back, High Siege. He's only 82 rated, so a plus five upgrade for 26.4 million pounds. Great business. Welcome to Leicester City, Danny Carvajal. All right, one hour to go on deadline day. Another successful window. Two Spaniards coming into the club. Suarez and Carvajal in, High Siege out. This is what our starting 11 looks like. Definitely think we're going to win the Premier League this season. Maybe even go the distance in the Champions League. All going to come down to who we get drawn up against and all that good stuff. But anyways, let's go take a look at our Champions League group. All right, so we've been drawn in Group A of the Champions League here. And it's definitely going to be a challenge as we're drawn up against Atletico Madrid, who I'm assuming will have a pretty good side at this point. Piersley, Eindhoven and Shakhtar Donetsk also in the group. Both of them could definitely give us a good run for our money, but Atletico Madrid, by far the toughest team in the group. Can we get through to the knockout rounds for this fourth season? Let's have a look and see in three, two, one. So we finished top of our Champions League group. Us and Atletico Madrid dominated. Well, I wouldn't say dominated, but both of us were the, obviously the clear best two teams. Both on 11 points, we go through on goal difference. So, as we switch to the tournament tree, where are we that rhymed? We are on the sort of middle left, bottom left, and we're going to be taking on Napoli in the last 16. So, definitely a simpler task than PSG, but still a quality challenge here. All right, this is awesome to see. We're just about halfway through the Premier League season. We're sitting top of the league, nine points clear, only one loss to our name. Leicester City on fire. This is really good to see because if we don't manage to win it this year, we definitely want to make sure we're in the Champions League for season number five. So to be at this sort of a position in January is really, it's comfortable. Comfortable. What the hell am I trying to say? I meant to say comforting and I went to say comfortabling. Comforting. Comforting. God damn it. I'm not going to lie. This transfer window sucked crap. It was so bad. I tried the whole window. We had virtually, like, we had an all right amount of money, like 8 million or so. You can work with that. I tried to sign ourselves a backup right back. Nothing was happening. Nothing would go through. I've copped the L. It's happened. It's done. We need to focus now on the Champions League knockout rounds and take on Napoli. All right, just the way I like it. The away leg first. We take on Napoli here. Traveling to Naples, the beautiful Naples, to take on Napoli. Hopefully, we can get off to a good start. Hopefully, we can bang some away goals in. A yellow card, definitely not the start we were after. Got to be really careful in the knockout rounds with getting players suspended and all that. They take the lead here, Napoli. They are 1-0 up. As we move into the second half, can we bang in an away goal? Surely. They've got Kareem Benzema. That is absolute horse crap. Come on, 15 minutes to go. Things are not looking good, but Hyung Min Sun steps up in the 80th minute and gets us one away goal. I mean, it's not the greatest performance, but I'll definitely take it heading into the second leg. All right, back at the King Power now for the home leg. If, if, as long as Napoli don't score, we go through. That's the thing to think about. We are one all score lined, but we have the away goal advantage, so our defense needs to hang on strong. They've got a lot of attacking firepower. I know Zelinski and Jorginho. We get the lead, though, through Brand, but Jorginho, Zelinski, Diawara, Milik, obviously, and Signe. Damn it! It's all equal. I was just about to say, they're all quality attackers. They've got a real good side here, Napoli. 
One all. It's all tied up. The away goal advantage is out of our favor. Julian Brandt puts us back in front. Suarez misses a penalty, which would have secured us the result, but it doesn't matter. We go through to the quarterfinals in a lot less comfortable circumstances than I hoped, to be honest. Well, we're looking to avenge ourselves from last season. Last season, we were eliminated by PSG in the quarterfinals. We get a chance for revenge now. As we step up and take them in the quarterfinals, they knocked us out. I think I said they knocked us out in the quarterfinals. They knocked us out in the round of 16. We faced them in the quarterfinals, hoping to get through to the Champions League semifinals and hopefully go the way. All right, time for the first leg here at home. Not where we want to start, but PSG coming back to the King Power Stadium from last season. We're definitely, or from season two, I should say, we're definitely a much stronger side than the last time we faced them. Are they much different? They've got Cancelo, Kumpimbe, Sven Bender, Jal Mario, Komen. They've got a really good side. Sanabria. We did take the lead though in the 21st minute. I didn't even catch that. They've got Kangawa on the bench. That's random. Neymar gets the middle away goal. Damn it, that is not what we want. And Sanabria makes it 2 1. Mares ties it up, but they have two away goals, which is not good at all for us. We need to get a third goal here. That is tough. Two away goals. We have to just basically win outright in the second leg because unless it's a two-all draw, I don't think we're going to score that many. All right, time for the away leg now. Traveling to the Parc des Prince, and our, our task is a lot more difficult. Dyer is out through suspension for this second leg, so Steve Cook coming in to try stopping the might of Neymar and PSG. Julian Brandt gets us an away goal. That is the start we were most definitely after. We're 3-2 up on aggregate. Kingsley Komen, though, makes it 3-all. We need to score another away goal now. If we score another goal, then we knock out the away advantage, which would be massive, but it's not looking too good at the moment. Come on, somebody step up. Hyung Min Sun, 75th minute. We're going through on away goals, not just away goals, on aggregate. 2-1 result, that is 4-3 overall. Champions League semi-final time. Barcelona versus Leicester. I mean, this means one thing. If we happen to take down Barcelona, which obviously isn't a guarantee at this point, it's just a hypothetical, but if we do take them down, that means we break the streak of versing Barcelona in a Champions League final in a rebuild. I mean, for the time being, at least it gives us the opportunity to, because we might not win it. We might not win it even if we get there, but looking at the Champions League semi-final on the other side of the tree, Schalke Dortmund, pretty weird semi-finals there. All German affair. Let's hope we get to first one of them. All right, we're away at the Camp Nou here to kick things off in the semi-finals. To be honest, we haven't been all that convincing across the previous four games. We've had some really tight score lines, so we need to make sure that's the perfect start. Oh no, but that's a bad follow-up. Suarez against his former side does get us an away goal, but Joel Matip gets sent off straight right in the eighth minute. It must have been a terrible challenge or a terrible handball or something. Hyungmin Sun, though, against all the odds, gets us a second away goal. How have Barcelona... Okay, there they go. They've scored a goal. We're 2-1 up. We've got two away goals. We're in a really good position, but we're going to have to be without Matip for the second leg. Home leg now, without Matip. We've got Steve Cook back in. He did all right against PSG, to be fair to him, in the last, in the last round of qualifiers, but is he going to be able to do the job again? We've got two away goals. We need to have a strong start here. Maybe bag an extra goal. That would be great if we could. Come on, let's just get no injuries, no suspensions, and no goals against us. Hyungmin Sun picks up a yellow card, but at the moment it is nil all. Inacho gives us a 3-1 advantage now. Jose Glair gets an away goal back for Barcelona. They need another goal. If they do, we will be going to extra time, but yes, there it is. Leicester City on our way to the Champions League final. Get in there, fellas. One all draw. We won the first leg 2-1. That makes it 3-2 on aggregate. And we're going to be playing either Borussia Dortmund or Schalke. Wow, okay. I was not expecting this heading into the rebuild, but we're playing Schalke in the Champions League final. The side that we rebuilt last week is going to be our opponent here for the Leicester rebuild. Who have they faced? They've had a really tough run, actually. Probably the same as us in difficulty, if not even harder. Real Madrid, Juventus, and Borussia Dortmund. 
Schalke definitely deserves to be there, so it's going to be quite an interesting final. Liverpool lose yet another Europa League final in this rebuild. They lose to Real Sociedad this time. Leicester City, Premier League champions, get in there, fellas. We held on and kept our advantage from the start of the season. We finished top of the table on 80 points, so if we lose tonight to Schalke, that means we get another crack at the big time in season number five. Checking out the drop zone, Fulham, Leeds, and Crystal Palace all down to the championship. A lot of clubs with history in there, back down to the second division. Earlier in the season, we did lose, unfortunately, the Community Shield to Manchester City 2-0. Again, although being in the Champions League final and champions of the Premier League, we can't even make it to the last 16 of the FA Cup. What's the go with that? But we don't have those issues in the Carabao Cup as we defeat Sheffield United in the final 3-1. We beat uh, Crew Alexandria on penalties, West Ham 3-1, Stoke City 3-0, and then Sheffield United 3-1. So here is a look at our squad report as we get into the Champions League final. Hopefully it's the last time we have to look at this squad, but if we lose tonight, there's definitely going to be a few changes next season. Number one, I will be getting ourselves a brand new right midfielder. Mares is going down in overall. I was hesitant to get rid of him in this rebuild. He's a Leicester, kind of not a legend, but like he's one of the last players from that championship winning hero side, him and Vardy. But he's the, one of the last ones in this side in the career mode itself to be there. But I'll probably sell him next year if we don't win tonight. I'm going to put Jamie Vardy on the bench as well in this Champions League final. But anyways, let's stop talking about it. Let's get in and hopefully take down Schalke and win the Champions League final. I hope. We rebuilt them only a couple of days ago, but now we must destroy them. Leicester City versus Schalke. Let's bring the title back to the King Tower. Here we go, we're passing it around. Trying to find an opening. Nice stuff there from Ian Archo. Goes to Hyung Min Sun. Very excited to see how this guy plays in game. We're just trying to find an opening here. Ian Archo turns on the angle, wins the ball back. Goes back to Ilkay Gundawan. Trying to pop off a long shot here with the German midfielder. We're passing it around. Hyung Min Sun turns, shoots. What a save from Farman. Throw in here. Brandt's going to go short there to Hyung Min Sun, who goes back to Ilkay Gundawan. Trying to find an opening. He's going to go here to Hyung Min Sun, who goes there. Ian Archo turning, shooting, hitting the post. Follow up. We're going to get the follow up. Dennis Suarez put virtually no power on that one, but fortunately, it is enough. Has anybody noticed, ever since the latest patch, rebound goals have been occurring so much more often. It was a, it was a worthy shot there, a noble effort from Ian Archo, but Dennis Suarez is the one that gets all the credit. Julian Brandt, we're going to throw this one here to Ilkay Gundawan. We're trying to get a second goal here before, before half time. Dennis Suarez, nice movement. Should we pop it? We are going to pop it, but it is an average shot to be honest. Dennis Suarez had a good start to the game so far. Goes there to Hyung Min Sun. Plays a lovely ball here. Julian Brandt on the tough angle. We probably should have had that one first time. But we are all over Schalke here. To be honest, looking at their starting 11, I was very surprised they had even made it to this point. Not too many amazing players, but we're here and we're hoping to dominate them as we get a free kick. They're trying to get an equalizer here. They're not going to get one with terrible passing like that. Riyad Mahrez. Nice ball there to Ian Archo. I see Hung Min Sun. Is he onside? I think he is. 
I see you in the middle. We're going to go in. Dennis Suarez. Oh, what a save from Farman. That is an incredible save. That should have been 2-0 there. Oh, my. I was about to say Dennis Suarez with the brace. We're still on the attack, though. Mares. Oh, nothing comes of it. Here we go. Nice movement here. Lovely ball there. Julian Brandt. He's going to hold the play up. Dinks it back post. Ian Nacho. Put your laces through it, mate. We've had so many opportunities. We're playing it through. Here we go. It's going to be Brandt. Oh, they get lucky. Is it going to go for a corner? It does, eh? We're going to get one of the luckiest corners ever. Can we capitalize on it? Riyad Mahrez goes in there. Ian Nacho can't. Julian Brandt. I thought that was going to float. Here we go. Gundogan. Nice ball there to Julian Brandt, who runs across field, goes to Hyung Min Sun. Hyung Min Sun looking to get on the score sheet. He runs. Hyung Min Sun belts it. Good save from Farman. Mares, though, the follow up. He's still got it at his feet. He's still got it. And we're going to get a free kick out of it. Gerard running through here. We're trying to defend them. We can't let them score. Imagine if they got an equalizer with their first attempt of the game. Fortunately, they don't yet. But now we're on the counter here. Dennis Suarez, why wouldn't you keep making that run, Ianacho? Fortunately, we've somewhat still got this opportunity on through Mares. Although some of our support runs have been terrible today. Gundawan, he's going to belt it! Hits the post! But we get the free kick. That doesn't make sense. How had we played the advantage? I mean, at least we get the free kick here. Riyad Mares, he's trying. Riyad Mares, just too much power. Kungmin Sun, holding down the sprint button. Hyungmin Sun trying to draw some defenders in. He's going to lay it off to Julian Brandt. Goes back. Hyungmin Sun. He finishes it. The South Korean has surely just won Leicester City, the Champions League final. We have been all over them. I'm not going to lie. This is probably the most dominant Champions League final we have ever had. I don't think they've had a single opportunity on goals, as in shots. But I thought we stuffed it up there. Great run. Lovely finish off the right foot. And with eight minutes to go, we have one hand on the Champions League title. I'm going to go ahead here and make a substitution. I'm going to bring Jamie Vardy on for the last few minutes. Well, it's, it's just right. As a Leic If you're a Leicester fan, I think this is the thing you would want to see. Let's see if Jamie Vardy can make an impact on the final few minutes. Oh, well, we intercept that one nicely there from Gundogan. Hyungmin Sun going to Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy turns to the defender. Jamie Vardy shoots. Jamie Vardy scores! 88th minute, Jamie Vardy is going to secure the Champions League title for Leicester. His first real touch of the game turned Stambouli inside out, ran on the angle and tucked that one home. Bottom left hand corner, one of the most dominant Champions League finals we have ever participated in. Sees Vardy getting us a third goal. Only a few seconds to go. This might be the final play. We might actually have time for one last attack. Can we get Riyad Mahrez involved? Mahrez, the Algerian, cutting around, holding it up, going back. Jamie Vardy! Imagine if he picked up a brace. But the referee, there it is. The referee blows the full-time whistle. Leicester City are champions of Europe. A 3-0 demolition job over a incompetent Schalke side, a Schalke side that really didn't deserve to be there looking at their starting 11. But there it is. Leicester City fans, I hope you are happy to see that. That is another rebuild done and dusted. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure that you leave a like on the video. Make sure that you bloody Scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. And check out my social media links. But I'll let you guys enjoy the title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Thanks.
making memories and motions with the traces of the chosen that's come together with a heart wired.